what it means to be love, to act out love, to embody love, to express love in all areas of our lives. And to help us continue this conversation, I get to join today now. My name is Reverend Natasha Reed Rice, and I'm delighted to be a part of this conversation for it truly is life giving and life transforming. So to help me as we continue along this journey of what it means to be love, I am joined by an amazing panel. So I wanna introduce our panelists, bring them into our space and have an even deeper conversation of what it means to be love. Today with us, we have Callum Worthy, a Canadian actor, writer, producer, known for his roles as Dez on Disney Channel series, Austin and Ally. Great to have you today. Please correct me. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, it's Calum, yeah. Calum, wonderful. Yeah. Nice to have you, and I can't wait to, to hear more from you. Joining Thank Calum, you. we have Monique Coleman, actress, producer, activist, and host, and wonderful voice. Thank you for being in this space. We can't wait to have more conversation with you as well. And joining, we have Christian Keys, actor, singer, and model. Hey, Christian, thanks for being with us today. And to round out our panel, we have Yvette Nicole Brown, whom we just heard in the video and who we are ready to hear even more from. For those of you who don't know Yvette, Yvette is an actress, a writer, a producer, a host, best known for her series regular roles on The Community, The Mayor, and The Odd Couple. Hey y'all, welcome. Hi. Hi, thanks for having us. Great to have you. So this portion of our conversation, we're talking about be love from the inside out. Um, and something you said, Yvette, in your opening video for this conversation about being selfless, about um, making being the embodiment of that love. You all have to play different characters. And yet with every character you play, you bring your being. So when you're thinking about the challenges, not only of the roles you might have the challenge of, of, of recreating and telling the story of, but also of your industry, how does how do you bring the being of love into those spaces, into those shows, into the studio, into conversations with producers, and for those who are writers, to the written page to then tell a story about what it means? So with that, let's go ahead and kick off the conversation. Can I start with you, Christian? How? Why what not? Why mean? not? <laughs> what does that mean for you as you as you embody love in the various characters and stories you are a part of? Um, I think to start with, just just creating a a genuine and authentic uh, safe space for people to create and make decisions and make bold and audacious choices on set. You know, in front of the camera while it's rolling and you know, behind the scenes. And if somebody has, um, you know, if they need something more or have a suggestion or, you know, we're, we're creating something together. It's a team, it's a, it's a family thing. And just being a good teammate, um, I feel like, you know, that contributes to my individual contribution as a good teammate makes everybody else more comfortable and allows them to feel like a family member and they can trust me and confide in me and they have a safe space. Mm. And I think that's a good start. I think that's a good, as a creative, I think that's a good space to to start. Um, get, earning your teammates' trust so we can tell this story properly from a place of love. You know, sometimes you're the bad guy. Sometimes mm. you're the bad bad woman. We got, you know, amazing women on here. Um, Yvette, I loved your, your movie about the bridesmaid with Javicia. It was incredible. Thank you, brother. Um, thank you, loved, brother. Loved it, loved it. Loved it. So love the twice. shout out. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, I think for me, it starts there on set. You said something, Christian, that I, I hope we can pick up on, that love is linked to creativity. You yes, can't really absolutely. create without love, right? And you talked about safe space and you talked about trust. Monique, where does that take you? How do you incorporate that into your work? Yeah, so the, the first thing that came to my mind, by the way, I love all of you. <laughs> love you. The first Likewise, thing that love came you back. to my mind, thank you, uh, was gratitude. You know, mm -hmm. showing up in gratitude. I think sometimes we forget the little girl or little boy that lives inside of us that, that didn't um, know, that, that dreamt of being in the places that we now occupy so at times so seamlessly. And mm -hmm. I think leading with gratitude and compassion 
are ways to always ground and remember that we're here to serve something larger than just ourselves, which goes back to what Yvette was saying as, as far as selflessness, you know. And I, I also, you know, would like to add that it, I absolutely agree with being selfless, but I also think that when you have practiced self-love and mm -hmm. you recognize that the that love that you can extend, that you start with with yourself can extend out that you really, it's, it isn't selfish to mm -hmm. practice self-care. It isn't selfish to do the things that you need to do to get your head in the space that you need to be in, in order to be able to best serve the whole project, best serve. And sometimes that can mean setting boundaries. Sometimes that could mean um, being clear, but it's, but it's communicating clearly always from that place of love. Yeah. Beautiful. So it's as if you, the self-love piece is filling up your cup so that your cup Exactly. Will flow. Exactly. Beautiful. Kalem, how have you um, experienced love on set, love in the industry, or how have you had to bring it when you didn't experience it? That's a great question. And first um, first of all, I want to say I'm, I'm honored to be on this panel with, with um, everyone. Uh, the, the, I believe the key to acting is empathy. You mm -hmm. can't play a character mm -hmm. and judge them at the same time. And the key to, to uh, great storytelling is to not ask what someone did or if that, that person did something, but why they do it and who they really are. And um, I think we can bring those same values to life as well, which is why I think you see so many artists that are also activists because love inspires action. Love it. And you actually now just provided me a great bridge. How do you, or do you think you should use your platform I mean, we're right now, right? We're we're not. I don't even. I don't even like to say we're coming out of COVID because we're still marching through, right? There's a good part of the world that is still beleaguered, and we see some mm -hmm. things are starting to shut down again. In this moment, though, it has made us all more aware of other people, more aware of vulnerabilities. So, Yvette, do you do you think that? Uh oh. Oh, it was a good question too. I could feel it's about to be a good question. Mm -hmm. It sure was. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Can y'all hear? Now we can. Yeah, we oh, missed the question though. What, what was the question? I was saying, do you feel like in this moment, right, where we're all eyes are on issues within our social context, that you should use your platform or can use your platform to help other people to shine a light on some areas where we need more love? Yeah, I mean, first of all, for me, uh, love is service. You can't you can't talk about love if you you don't have a servant's heart, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, that takes place on set because you you shouldn't be going on set as an actor to see what you can get. You should be going on set as an actor to see what you can give. And that means as a performer, that means as a human being on set. I go on sets to be a safe a safe place, a refuge. I'm not even there so much as an actor. I'm there as a shoulder to cry on. I'm looking to see who needs help every day that I'm on a set, wherever I go, that's how I live my life. That's a servant's heart, right? Which we should all aspire to, right? So it's the same thing when you have a platform. You don't have followers just so you can tell people about lip gloss and, and flat tummy tea. You have followers so that you can lead them somewhere that matters. You can lead them towards the light, right? So in my mind, I've always said, and I say it on Twitter all the time, the moment I have to go forward without Jesus, I'm not going, that's first. And second, if two or three of us are here when it's all over, that's fine, as long as I've used my platform for good. And I will never not say something because I have a career concern. The Lord didn't give me my career so that I could be safe and settled in my career. He gave me my career and my platform so I could help people. So that means I have to shine a light on things that are wretched. I have to talk about things that are good and I have to support things that matter. And so, yes, activism is a part of being a servant leader. It is what we are all supposed to do. Phenomenal, right? Because it extends back to the, the comment that I think you all are, are tuning in on is that when even when you're in a role, it's bigger than you. Right. Mm -hmm. It always right. is. Yeah. So how does that connect to um, justice for you? How does love connect to justice? How does that justice connect to the storytelling work that you are all engaged in as a career? Who do you want to start? Take it. Okay. Take the mic. Um, I think fighting for or speaking up on, on our platforms, on our causes, but other causes as well. I think, I think that, it makes me feel good. I think 
Is it just me? I can't hear him. No, I can't either. We can't hear you, Christian. We can't yeah, you don't want to. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. No. Um, I was just saying that I think it's important. Passionate <laughs> about, but also, um, a great way to to spread love, universal love. That language is to discuss other people's plight um, on on our platform as well, or to take my son down to uh, a women's rights. Uh, march for equal pay and things like that. I need those big brown eyes that I helped create with, you know, I had some help, um, but I need, <laughs> I need him to understand as he moves forward that he needs to take up that mantle and, and not just things that are important to us, but you know, things that are important to other human beings need to be important to us. And we need to embody that struggle, Ooh. even if it's not our own, we can speak on our own. I'm definitely going to speak on you know, the things that I witnessed as a large black man in America for 45 years. But um, I'm also going to speak on LGBTQ plus rights. I'm going to speak on women's rights. I'm going to speak on what's going on in Palestine and, you know, Israel and and, and other things that hurt my heart. And um, as Mr. Worthy said, um, that affect me as an empath. So mm -hmm. I'm going to speak on human things as well. And I think that's a great start for um, spreading love with, with my platform. That's awesome. And it's proactive. And it's that yeah. bridge between an ally and, a, and an accomplice is that you're not gonna wait. You're gonna jump out there and and, and take the shots. On yeah. behalf Consistently of though, not when yeah. it's trending, not last year when, you know, everybody was BLM and, and everything that, and, and then a lot of those allies have, you know, dissipated they, they away. Um, they dust in the wind now. It's like, where y'all at though? Where y'all, we still, we, we we do still matter. So the consistency, that helps too, just saying. Absolutely. Here's another question for you all. What stories need to be told that are not being told? Mm. I, I'd like to speak to that actually. Yes. I think it's really important for us to express more black joy. Ooh. That's something that I specifically want to see more of. And, and, and joy of any person of color. I think that so often uh, people of color are kind of, their sto our stories are surrounding our issues and not our spirit, our soul, our character, who we are as individuals, how our contribution to humanity, who we are without those things. And I think that, you know, in order to create the world that we want, we have to be able to imagine that. And as storytellers, we don't want to continue to resurrect our dark, we, we need to, to look at and, and tell those stories, but I also believe that alongside those stories, we need to tell new stories and not only resurrect our pain, but project out into the future images that young people can look at and see and believe that themselves and all of ourselves to be something more than our plight, more than our pain, more than yeah. our trauma, more than the things that have held us down. Because if we believe that what we put our attention to grows, then in some ways we can unintentionally be circling right back to the same things instead of imagining a future that we can reach forward and pass that baton and tell the next generation, you don't have mm. to go through what I've been through. That's good, girl. That's my, good. My, my. Mm -hmm. So as we pass this baton from Monique to Calum, Caleb, on that note, when we think about even tying back to something you said earlier um, about using that platform for active, act, being an activist and, and having empathy for other folks, when we think about the industry itself of acting, what responsibility do you think that the industry of, of acting, of writing, of producing has to this generation? Well, storytelling is, um, is the key to so many of these issues. Um, I find that with, with a lot of young people, um, the best way to, to talk about these issues is by personalizing it. Mm. Uh, when we hear someone's story, we make a connection and uh, that can lead to compassion, which leads to understanding, which can open our heart to love. Uh, mm. And I, I'm, I'm so inspired by this next generation. Um, they're informed and they have the courage to speak truth to power. Uh, and because of social media, they're not just just learning about these big global issues. They're also interacting with other people and hearing other people's stories who are experiencing them firsthand. And I believe that's 
that's creating an incredibly compassionate generation. And I think the industry needs to continue to take note of that and learn from that. Awesome. And this generation, we also know, is very action oriented, right? Very purpose oriented. If I were to go around the room now and ask each of you, what one thing will have you done or will you continue doing or will you start doing to inject love into the world, into storytelling from your seat, from your ability and agency? Well, I, I want to continue to write scripts. Uh, thank you to Christian for shouting out Always a Bridesmaid. And he is also, he's very humble. He's also an amazing writer and has written movies that have been produced as well. Um, so he's 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 in the game too. And we I believe we both, I'll speak for you, Christian, when I say we're trying to create uh, images, like Monique said, that show our joy and our love. And yes, our struggles, but not that life is just drudgery and it's just pain and suffering from the time you're born till you die. Like we fall in love. You know, we have big dreams that come true and we have setbacks that we rise from. And so in everything that I create as an actor, as a producer, as a writer, and hopefully soon as a director, I want it to be the kind of things that make people think, help people to grow, but also show um, our humanity and the humanity of others. You know what I mean? I think sometimes we can get so stuck in the muck and the mire of telling our stories that we forget that there may be someone else that needs a light shined on where they're coming from. There's a lot of cultures that have not been explored. And um, I would love to be someone that can open the door and hold a door open for another filmmaker or writer from another culture to come through and have their shot. So that's what I hope to endeavor to do going forward. Powerful, powerful. I, Christian, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, she, she, she started something right there. Um, I do think like Monique said as well, um, we can change the narratives uh, that we don't like uh as creatives if we want to see more love and believe more love then let's show more love in our right. in, in, in our books in our novels in mm -hmm. our tv shows and you know let's sprinkle yeah you might have a drama but sprinkle some hope in it see yes. that thing with a little bit of hope on it you know, some optimism you know so we get a chance to you know believe in something hope is universal no matter what y your skin tone is love right. is universal and it's like you know it's, it's like music it's something that everybody can 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 relate to so as creatives i think i want to continue to um address it that way also as a creative you know making my making my female characters in in projects just rock stars um i, I took a class of uh shonda rhymes master class and she said take half of your male characters and make them just just as as dominant as the men are make them that bad a as, as, women. as and uh as women and watch what it does and it and it improves the storytelling it it, it changes that narrative you know it, it makes you look now I, I, I watch something and i'm like oh she killing it i i want to i want a male character that bad i want a male character right. that strong love that as, as, as creatives you know, we, we, we have to change that narrative to where just like black folks, we aren't just slavery. We aren't just mm -hmm. twerking. We aren't just the crack e e epidemic. You know, we're we're love, we're soulful, we're music. We got a, a rhythm of our own. We're colorful, we're proud, we're strong and we're resilient and, and we love hard and we fight for mm -hmm. what we love. So let's tell some of those stories like Monique was saying and everything on purpose. Love comes from purpose. It's richer and more genuine when you're in your purpose, I believe, and when you're moving on purpose. And and so that's what I intend to continue doing now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Monique. Yes, I second, third, everything that has already been said. Um, a couple things I want to add is that specifically myself as an artist, the roles that I choose, I think that that is one, one area. There was, when I was younger, it was really just so much about me. I just want to do everything. And, you know, now really looking at the impact that the roles that, that I'm choosing are making. Also, I think just something generally is that when we see something, say something on set, mm. meaning that, you know, a lot of times we could be telling these dynamic stories, uh, but then the people that the story's about are not actually represented above the line. Or there, there's just certain discrepancies that happen on, on set, or we're telling an incredible story in, in a community that we're making no effort to actually impact 
impact. And so that is something as uh, someone who has spent a lot of time um, doing work at the government level and at the level of the, U the UN, I think it's really important to actually take the time to, to recognize the impact that you're that we're making on the actual community, not just the stories that we're telling about communities, because ultimately the story is meant to be a bridge to actual activism. The story itself isn't. It, right. it, it is it is a vehicle. It is an avenue. It is an expression. But it in and of itself is is meant to open our eyes so that we actually do something to impact the human beings whose stories we are privileged to be able to tell. Awesome. Caleb, you can close us out. What one thing are you going to do, start doing, keep doing to bring more love into the space of, of, of the area that you all are in, as well as the communities you're in? Well, I love all of the answers that have that have already been said, and I feel like um, so much has already been been said. However, I, I, what I, one thing I want to do is um, use the following I have on social media uh, mm. to give a platform to other people. Um, I think my followers have heard a lot from me. I want to make sure there's other people who are able to tell their stories and speak their truth, and uh, so that the the issues that they're concerned about it, it become personalized, and that they care about not just the issue but that individual as well. Well, you all are truly that love that cast out hate. You're truly the light that cast out the darkness. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation and contributing so richly. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Monique. Thank you, Calum. Thank you, my sister, Yvette. It's so great to see you. Take care.